after 2020, it became way harder to do the job of law enforcement. When people were upset with the way that this country has treated black communities, that became a stand-in for, you know what, we're upset with individual officers. It doesn't make sense to hold individuals who show up in communities and try and solve those problems responsible for the fact that we have not invested in those communities. And still, there are police chiefs, police unions, and individual officers who are eager to do the right thing. Those folks are our partners. The Center for Policing Equity got started because law enforcement knew that uh, what they were being asked to do was gonna result in communities being upset with the results, and communities were upset with the results. If you're asking people to be firefighters and mental health experts and substance disorder experts and uh, social workers, you're gonna end up with some gaps. We've bridged that gap, giving tools to law enforcement, to communities, and to electeds to create public safety systems that keep communities safe by keeping everybody treated fairly. We leverage the data science that is part of the DNA of our organization. We provide them with language that helps them make that science into actionable policies. And we also allow for them to talk to each other in ways that they can't when you don't have a scientist in the room. At CPE, we really have two streams of work. Uh, one is the redesign or reimagining of police work. That is really looking for a response or a mechanism outside of normal policing. The second one, which is the area law enforcement initiative focuses on, is actually reducing harm in policing. Police are the part of our government that most commonly has contact with the people. One in five people across the United States has contact with someone in law enforcement every year. CPE works with dozens of law enforcement agencies uh, every year. And so we partner with police departments, um, provide them an equity assessment, and then we measure and monitor um, any implementations or changes they've made to see over time how that impacts disparities. You can't manage what you don't measure. So step one in our harm reduction approach is the Justice Navigator Assessment, a statistical analysis that uses police data to identify where and how any disparities in their policing outcomes might be. Our organization collects a wide range of data from a lot of different sources. We look at use of force data, traffic stops, pedestrian stops, and crime. We often collect data sets from police departments, sometimes other local data sets as well. We will do quantitative analyses with those. We'll sometimes do interviews, focus groups, surveys with community members and also with officers. We'll do observational studies. We analyze policies that they have to look for potential risks for inequitable policing. For a number of years, we've done the Justice Navigator Assessment. And the feedback we got from law enforcement was like, that was helpful in telling us where our disparities were. What we needed was a little more information to do something about it. Uh, from that grew the data investigation guide. Step two is really that assessment of what exactly is underneath those disparities and what are some possible solutions that we can assist the police department and the community in co-producing. For example, we might uh, do a deeper dive into uh, a use of force, let's say. When is it occurring? What time of day? Days of week? All the circumstances that surround that. We can provide them with tools that help them to understand where do they have problems, where are they being successful, and where can they do the work? What's unique about our organization is that we come at it from a multidisciplinary approach. So we aren't just scientists, we are scientists and former members of law enforcement and community engagement specialists. The first kind of expert that is most important to the work that CPE does are the experts who are living the things that we are studying or advising on. That means community members, elected leaders, and law enforcement. There are multiple ways that um, communities can provide insights uh, to law enforcement agencies. So communities hold the keys to many of the solutions, but often lack the autonomy to really lead initiatives that reduce burdensome policing practices. Center for Policing Equity comes in to not only bridge the gap, but to really focus on how do we uplift sentiment of communities? What are the community needs and how does community play a role? 
doing that co-creation of strategies and processes, we start to build trust and we start to show transparency. If we're going to redesign systems, if we're going to promote equity, we need folks from all sectors, backgrounds, and walks of life to be part of the solution. The reality is if we're gonna make the country a better version of itself, we're gonna to have to acknowledge that policing is at least as complex a system as our educational and healthcare systems. In the public safety space, there's a shift right now. And the shift is moving from imagination to implementation of how to reach public safety in an equitable fashion. Putting crises out of business should be the business of our public safety systems. It should be what we spend money on, it should be what police are preoccupied with, and it's what CPE makes possible.